Welcome to this new video. Today, I'm going to show you how to enable conditional access on an API gateway managed by the Nginx controller. So first of all, it's important to understand my architecture for this demo. So let's have a look. In this architecture, as you can see, I have on the right side an API application, modern, modern application running in microservices. Okay? I will show you the application. It's a very simple application generating a sentence. Every word in the sentence comes from a different microservice running in Kubernetes. That's it. In front of this Kubernetes cluster, have a standalone Nginx Plus instance configured as an API gateway. And this API gateway is adopted and managed by an Nginx controller version 3.16 in this demo today. In front of this Nginx Plus, there is an F5 Big IP. Okay, it doesn't matter here, okay, because this Big IP is just uh, hosting the virtual IP address and the certificates. And in order to authenticate the request, coming from the mobile application. And we will simulate this mobile application with a Postman. Uh, in order to, to grant an access, we need a token, a JWT token, okay, JWT. The issuer, the OpenID Connect provider in this demo will be Keyclock, okay? So we'll show you in a few minutes how to configure Keyclock, how to issue a JWT token, how to validate the token, and how to add a condition to access the endpoint. So let's do it. So first of all, let's connect to the controller. As you can see, I have one instance, okay, up and running. So far, it's an Nginx Plus. On the service side, in the API, as you can see, have an API deploy and publish, okay, and running. So I have a version one, I have a version three that did one. Okay, I could have several versions. Here we will we are going to have a conditional access in the version three. But first of all, let's configure Keyclock. This is Keyclock. So in Keyclock, I already created a client, okay? The client. So you can find here my Postman. This is my client. So when you create a client, you have a client ID and you have a client secret. You can see my client secret is here. What I need to do now is I want to grant access to an API endpoint only and only if a user belongs to a group, okay? So what I'm gonna do first, I will go to my users and I have two users, Matt and Fouad. And for, for Mathieu, I will add a new attribute. There are many ways, there are many ways to add attributes or to, or to add groups, okay? Here I'm gonna use the attributes. So I create an attribute name groups with the S and the value is employee. Okay, so Matt now has an attribute, but not Fouad, okay? Fouad does not have any attribute, is not part of the employee group. The next step is to create, to create a scope, okay? Because I want to, in, to insert this scope into the joy token. So let's create a new scope. Name, groups. I'm gonna use OpenID Connect, click Save. Now, as you can see, I can create a mapper. Okay, so I need to tell, okay, in this cup, I want to see this attribute value. So let's click on create, and the type is user attribute. Okay, so the name is groups, the attribute is group, and I want the name of the claim groups. Okay, so I use the same value everywhere. It will, it's, a multi, it's not a multi-value, but it could be. Click save. Okay, so now uh, the scope exists. Okay, I have a mapper that is just collecting the, the group value and create a new scope, add a new scope. So let's go to the client now, to my postman. So if I go to the client scope, as you can see now my group is available here. But before doing that, before adding this group, let's have a look on how the joy token looks like. So I can evaluate for one user the scope. 
the, the, the joint. So this is a joint, as you can see, I have my name, last name, email address, and so on. There is no group so far, okay? So I need to add, I need to add the scope groups. So now if I do an, an, another evaluation, format, if I go to the token, I can see the group on Prey. Perfect, okay? If I try with FOAD, it's another group, I love APM, okay? It's another one. So now I'm ready. My my key clock is ready to be used. So let's go. Let's come back to the to the controller. So in the controller now, I go to my published API version three, and I edit it. I go to my routing menu, and you can see here all my endpoints, all my components. And let's say I would like to add conditions on the colors endpoint. And I will show you later on what is the color. So I click on the security icon and I can add authentication. But to do so, as you can see, I need an identity provider. So let's create an identity provider. My identity provider is KeyClock. And KeyClock provide with a URL to, to download the public keys, okay? so. It's a joint token, and as you can see, I can either pass a key, okay, or it could be a URL, and KeyClock provide with a URL. So the URL is here, and you can see the key here. So let's just copy the URL from KeyClock and pass here, okay? So now the controller knows how to, to check the signature of the joint token. Let's get back to API. To my publish API, this one, and let's go to the colors. So now, let's create authentication. I set my key clock, and it's a bearer token. It's a joint token. I don't enable conditional access right now. Okay, just let's try without conditions. Okay. So on the client side, I use Postman to simulate. Um, a, a, mobile, a mobile application, for instance, doing an API call. So if I do a call like that, you can see that the endpoint is working, okay? This application is very simple. It's generating a sentence, okay? So you can see how it looks like, looks like that. This is the UI of the app. And you can see each word comes from a different microservice, okay? So if I refresh the page, a new word come up. So from the postman, you can see here the different words, okay? Kind lion of the green park. So here there is no authentication on this one because we only enable authentication on the color. So if I try to go to the colors, as you can see, I have a 401, unauthorized, okay? So let's enable old v2. Now I need to request a new token. So I just clear my cookie and I request a new token. I was on ticket with Matt. I love Mama. And I got a joy token. This is my joy token. Okay, so let's use the token and let's make a new request. Perfect. I have access to the colors. Okay. If I try with the FUAD, FUAD should have access as well because if you remember, we didn't enable conditional access so far. So have a new a new joy token for FWAD and perfect, I have access as well. So now I just want only employees and only Matt is an employee. So I need to update my conditional access configuration. So let's get back to my API endpoint. This one, as you can see it's only authentication so far. And now I check the box conditional access. Allow when, when a claim with the name groups contains the value employee, then you can access to colors. I submit, I wait one second, the controller is pushing the configuration to the Nginx instance, and now let's make a new try. If you remember, this token is from FUAD. 
is not allowed. For free forbidden. You can see here a super ID. Why? Because there is an Nginx app protect in front of the the API gateway. Okay, so the 403 is not allowed to go outside. So, but we see the 403 forbidden. And now let's try with uh, with Matt. So I clear the cookie. I request a new token for Matt. Matt is an employee, so Matt will have the claim groups with the value employee. So if I use a token, I send the request. I'm allowed. It's very easy, as you can see. This is how we enable conditional access from an engine controller for an API gateway. Thanks for watching.